In this video, we will show the different loads that can be applied on the steel structure by cranes and how to evaluate them as well as what are the suitable load combinations for crane loads with other loads on the structure. The provisions of ASCE 7-16 and AIST TR-13 for crane runway loads are summarized in this video. ASCE 7-16 is referenced by the International Building Code and is a legal requirement. AIST TR-13 is a guideline and can be used for situations not covered by ASCE 7-16 or when specified by project specifications. For LRFD load combinations, ASCE 7-16 indicates that the live load of a crane is the rated capacity. Thus, a 1.6 load factor is to be used. No comments are made about appropriate load factors relative to the trolley, hoist or bridge weight. Experts recommend using a 1.2 load factor for the bridge weight and the hoist and trolley weight. ASCE 7-16 defines the maximum wheel load as the loads produced by the weight of the bridge plus the sum of the rated capacity and the weight of the trolley. The trolley position on its runway should be at the location where the resulting load effect is maximum. Vertical impact percentages are then multiplied by the maximum wheel loads. The percentage factors contained in ASCE 7-16 are as follows. While AIST TR-13 sets the allowances for vertical impact as 25% of the maximum wheel loads for all crane types, except a 20% impact factor is recommended for motor room maintenance cranes. Impact loading should be considered in the design of column brackets regardless of whether ASCE 7-16 or AIST TR-13 requirements are being used. Horizontal forces act on crane runways due to a number of factors including runway misalignment, crane skew, trolley acceleration and trolley braking, and also crane steering. According to ASCE 7-16, the lateral force on crane runway beams with electrically powered trolleys shall be calculated as 20% of the sum of the rated capacity of the crane and the weight of the hoist and trolley. The lateral force shall be assumed to act horizontally at the traction surface on a runway beam in either direction perpendicular to the beam and shall be distributed with due regard to the lateral stiffness of the runway beam and supporting structure. The recommended LRFD load magnification factor is 1.6. AIST TR-13 recommends using the greatest of the table values or 20% of the combined weight of the lifted load and trolley or 10% of the combined weight of the lifted load and the entire crane weight. According to ASCE 7-16, the longitudinal force on crane runway beams is calculated as 10% of the maximum wheel loads of the crane. ASCE 7-16 excludes bridge cranes with hand-geared bridges from this requirement. Thus, tractive forces are not required for hand-geared cranes. The longitudinal force shall be assumed to act horizontally at the traction surface of a runway beam in either direction parallel to the beam. An LRFD factor of 1.6 is recommended. According to AIST TR-13, the tractive force is taken as 20% of the maximum load on driving wheels. The magnitude of the bumper force is dependent on the energy-absorbing device used in the crane bumper. 
The device may be linear, such as a coil spring, or nonlinear, such as hydraulic bumpers. The crane stop, crane bracing, and all members and their connections that transfer the bumper force to the ground should be designed for the bumper force. It is recommended that the designer indicates on the structural drawings the magnitude of the bumper force assumed in the design. The bumper force is typically specified by the owner or crane supplier. The force on each runway stop is the maximum bumper reaction from the inertial force acting at such locations, where V is the specified crane velocity at the moment of impact, specified to be 50% of the full rated speed. W is the total weight of the crane without the lifted load. G is the gravitational acceleration. And C sub T is the stroke of spring at point where the crane stopping energy is fully absorbed. For bumper blocks of wood or rubber commonly found in older cranes, this equation is not directly applicable. Manufacturer's literature or experience must be used for such installations. In the absence of specific data, it is recommended that the designer assume the bumper force to be the greater of twice the tractive force or 10% of the entire crane weight. The bending of the column due to eccentricity of the crane girder on the column seat must be investigated. The critical bending for this case may occur when the crane is not centered over the column, but located just to one side. This will create eccentricities in two directions. Eccentricity of the rail to the girder center line should also be considered in the design. Under this condition, the vertical wheel loads induce torsion on the girder that is typically resolved into a force couple on the top and bottom flanges for design. Although cranes do not induce seismic loads on a structure, the crane weight should be considered in seismic load determination. The seismic mass of cranes and trolleys that lift a suspended load need include only the empty weight of the equipment. The designer should carefully evaluate the location of the cranes within the building in the seismic analysis. Special consideration should also be given to design requirements beyond those specified in the building code for buildings, structures and equipment that must remain serviceable immediately after a design level earthquake. This may include the examination of vertical accelerations and their effect on the crane's ability to not bounce off the runway during a seismic event. In addition to the applicable building code, the owner may require conformance with AIST TR-13. However, if AIST TR-13 is not specified, the designer should consider the use of the structure in determining the criteria for design. Building codes may not contain information on how to combine the various crane loads, that is, which crane loads and how many cranes should be considered loaded at one time, but typically they do address how crane loads should be combined with wind, snow, live, seismic and other loads. For one crane, each span must be designed for the most severe loading condition with the crane in the worst position for each element that is affected. The following provisions apply for the design of members subject to crane lifts. These provisions are applicable to the design of supporting elements and are conforming to AIST TR-13. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you for watching.